Welcome to Unsuitable on Ray Radio, the award-winning financial services and business advisory podcast that challenges your old-school business practices and the traditional business suit culture. Our guests are industry professionals and experts who will challenge you to think beyond the suit and tie while offering you meaningful modern solutions to help you enhance your company's growth. I'm your host, Dave Kane. As one year closes and another begins, it's not uncommon to set a few personal and professional goals. After all, when you want to start something new, it's always a good idea to begin at the beginning. But instead of resolving to lose a few pounds or to become a regular member of that new athletic or country club in the hopes of landing some leads, today's guest has a better, more realistic idea. Simply focus on you. Maureen Metcalf, CEO of Metcalf & Associates, located in Columbus, Ohio, is a national renowned advisor, speaker, coach, and consultant. She is with us today to talk about resiliency and what leaders can do today to bounce back when things aren't going so well. This is sure to be an interesting discussion, and let's jump right in. Welcome to Unsuitable, Maureen. Thank you, Dave. It's a delight to be here. I'm I'm honored to be your guest to wrap up and kick off 2018. Great, fantastic, and and I want to start uh, with uh, some accolades for you. I understand that you are uh, an author and have a couple books, uh, and uh, can you share those with us? Oh, thank you. Yes, a little um, self uh, promotion here. <laughs> so, so our theme is innovating how you lead in, and transforming organizations. So really thinking about building leaders and organizations for the future. And so the foundation book is the Innovative Leaders Field Book, and it really talks about what is innovative leadership, not innovation leadership, but how do I update myself as a leader just like I update my mobile device. The second is, as an innovative leader, how do I transform my organization? And they really go in lockstep, that, that we've all seen people who have tried to change their organizations, and it's, it mainly looks like you people change, and let me know when it's done, it, rather than, you know, I, I kind of have to do things a little differently as we transform. So these are award-winning books. I should have said that in the beginning. Uh, are these like Grammy Awards? Or? No, I wish they were Grammy Awards. <laughs> International Book Award winners in Fantastic. the category of Best Business Reference Book. So probably not beach reading. We, we tried to do not some at the case beach. studies. <laughs> I have never walked down the beach and been mistaken for, for light or humor. So uh, if our listeners uh, jump on your web, web page or even contact Ray and Associates, we mm-hmm. can get them copies and get them uh, on board. Absolutely. Either Google Innovative Leadership Field Book. We have a website, Amazon. We count on Amazon for everything. Um, or, I can or, get it in two days. On Prime, yeah. Or a drone will drop it tomorrow. Perfect. <laughs> you know, you, we, we, we had uh, started the intro at uh, You Travel. Uh, around the country speaking on, on leadership topics. You know, before we get into the topic, can you give us a couple travel tips? I mean, how do you pack? Do you, like, mm. take 10 pairs of shoes? And oh, yeah. Do I look like I take <laughs> 10 pairs of shoes? I, I came back from Belgium earlier this year, uh, and vacation and business travel, and it was all in a rollerboard and a backpack. Unfortunately, I forgot the one critical element, the blazer. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So there so you go. this dress I have on now, I bought at the conference so I would have something to wear. Pack light and keep on moving. <laughs> but um, one of the things that, that I read uh, regarding uh, today's topic mm-hmm. was, um, you know, kind of uh, compare it to the safety speech. When you're on an air, airplane mm-hmm. and, and the stewardess comes on and tells you where stuff is and, mm-hmm. and what happens when the oxygen mask mm-hmm. drops mm-hmm. From, from the ceiling. So can you share that concept with us about what the stewardess says and how that pertains to leadership? Uh, I could probably recite what the steward or stewardess says. <laughs> um, how it pertains to leadership is if I am not resilient, when things go wrong, people look to us. right? We may not think they do and we may not think they should until we tell them what to do, but they do and our mood is contagious and if we're panicked, which we have all been on occasion, it, they notice. So our ability to respond to unexpected shocks. Um, in, in engineering terms, it would be almost, if there's an earthquake or something, how does a building 
stay situated. For humans, it something happens, how quickly can I return to center, flexible and focused? And the quicker I can, even if I don't feel like it, the quicker people perceive me as back on track, the, the more comfortable they are following me. So a couple of things we want to talk about today mm -hmm. in this uh, being a resilient leader. Uh -huh. Let me start with, are leaders allowed to have a bad day? We all do, so <laughs> whether or not we're allowed to. The question is, how do we balance authenticity with professional composure, right? So nobody really wants to know, they want me to be authentic. I can say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. My dog whined all night last night. But what you don't want to know on the podcast is all about my dog's problems. You want me to do my job. So what I just said is about all people need to know. It, and so I'm not saying be lacking authenticity, but when I show up, I'm paid to be present and do my best, and that means I need to manage myself so that my problems don't go spilling all over the table. So when you, when you manage yourself, uh, is, it, is it the same as taking care of your physical well-being, eating right, sleeping right? Those are parts of, I guess, the leadership DNA. And we don't, in our culture, we don't talk about that other than the Snickers commercials. <laughs> where they show people looking really scary. <laughs> um, but, but we reward people who are try to be superheroes, and they show up exhausted and fuzzy thinking, right? So we know that exhaustion is akin to being drunk. Um, and what we don't want is our leaders to be working such long hours that they, they might as well just have done shots on the way to work. So they it is. The fun the shots. <laughs> The physical well-being is, we, and you're right, we don't think about that. And in fact, a lot of people still brag about how hard they work. I, I should be rewarded for being the hardest, the latest one here at night, the one doing email all night. And I'm, I'm guilty of not balancing as well as I would like. But I really make an effort to, to manage sleep, at least, and healthy food. Are we talking about stress management in a bit, in a bit of a way here? In part, yeah. So, so think about a time when you were exhausted. You had to work long hours because you had a deadline. Or you had a personal issue. You know, someone in your family was ill and you were trying to navigate work and be at the hospital or whatever. We all have these things and they're unplanned. So how do we manage our physical well-being as well as possible with a focus that if I'm not attending to my physical health, I'm not going to be able to show up the way that people want me to. That's uh, part of the resiliency you're, you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about managing your thinking. And that's part of, I guess, the resiliency that I hear you talk about and write about. And, and is that, are we talking about managing negative thinking as well as positive thinking? Most people need to manage their negative thinking more than their positive thinking. And so I can't always control someone got sick, something broke, when we're running late on a deliverable. I can manage how I think. So five minutes of negative thinking causes six hours of physiological impact. So think about stress management. The um, cortisol goes rushing through our body. Think about a time when you were driving down the road and had a near miss in hitting someone and your body gets that rush of adrenaline as you try to navigate, do I turn either way, do I slam on the brakes, uh, you know, a mattress has just fallen off or a Christmas tree has fallen off in front of you, and you want to not hit somebody, and you want to be not dead. So your body floods with hormones, and immediately your prefrontal cortex shuts down, and the, the older parts of your brain kick in, and, and nothing enters your brain at that moment other than do I swore right, left, or breaks. If we are constantly in that state of heightened awareness, as leaders, we're not navigating the complexity. We're always in fight, flight, and freeze. So I need to, this is the one thing I think leaders can do really well. It, they can build the skill. Again, I can't always manage sleep. I can't always manage food. 
but I can manage how I think. So I have to be aware of my thinking and I have to have a process to let go of the negative thoughts and reshape them to positive. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. Let's say that uh, as we're going through this podcast and it's not going well, and we begin to, <laughs> we begin to blame the, the production crew, <laughs> that's certainly negative, uh, negative thinking there. It's always their fault. You we know? can blame that guy over yeah, there, that's, not you. Yeah, that's true. It's always his fault. But once I'm in that uh, negative uh, thinking uh, mode and I, and I realize that, are there some tips that you can suggest to get me out of that negative thinking? So the first question is, most of us, something goes wrong and we move into this um, catastrophic, right? So I'm five minutes late. These guys are never going to let me come back to do another podcast. I'm an idiot. They know it. Um, so the first question is, is it true? Should I be going down this path? Is it likely? And so the answer is, if I'm five minutes late, you guys have probably been five minutes late, and I can get over myself. But but for me, I can go down a pretty dark slope over something small, and then I pile on all kinds of other stuff that's not true either. So, so is it true? How do I reframe? Because what you don't want me to walk in is totally stressed in a basket case. So... One, I drove faster. <laughs> sure. I didn't run over anyone. I focused on being grateful, right? I'm delighted that I have the opportunity to be here. I'm delighted I didn't run over anyone on the way. <laughs> you know, and, and so often that ability to reframe and be grateful can shift enough that we can show up again with a kind of presence. Sometimes it's take a deep breath. That, that our body is not able to handle too much complexity at one point. So if I'm breathing and, and thinking positive thoughts, the negative stuff goes away, and those fight and flight hormones start to dissipate. You know, you also refer to, you know, another concept of, of leadership and uh, you know, being a resilient leader is, is look at developing emotional intelligence and a sense of, mm -hmm, of purpose. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit. Can you give me some examples of emotional intelligence and what should I be looking for? What should I be thinking about? So this is connected to what we've been talking about. I need to be aware of my thoughts and my emotions and I need to manage them. Again, what you don't want me to do is come in hair on fire, chattering about whatever went wrong this morning. You want me to be present, which means I've got to know what's going on inside and I've got to manage it, and my face forward is positive. Then I need to attend to the people around me, understand what their stresses are, and navigate such that I can connect with them and lead them effectively. So I need to know who they are, what they need, and I need to bring myself to be present in a way that's constructive. So this emotional um, intelligence, its is that ingrained or is that something that I need to learn from a consultant like yourself? <laughs> I'd love hey, to. there you go. <laughs> I'll buy the book. Um, I was certainly not taught this and, and maybe kids are now, but as an adult, what I was taught is you, you walk in the front door, you leave everything personal behind you, you, you show up, you do your work. We didn't attend to emotions. I didn't, I didn't even start thinking about emotions until I had a therapist that asked me about them and I just started twitching. Right? I didn't even have words. She'd say, how do you feel? And I'd say, hungry. And she's like, not an emotion. <laughs> Mad, happy, sad, glad, angry, what, whatever she said. And, and then she gave me a list that I could pick from and I was still twitchy. So I was not taught. And if I can't even identify them, then I can't manage them. So for people who think this is the soft stuff, managing my insides, not soft, especially when I had you know decades of not doing it. There's a whole bunch of closet cleaning that needs to happen. You know, as we, we talk, you've worked really hard. It's quite obvious to hone your leadership skills, constantly studying, adjusting, mm -hmm. uh, looking at other leaders. And I think that's a resilient leader. I mean, it has mm -hmm. to be. Thank you. Yeah, there is a constant growth, and with that is the acknowledgement. It's kind of a curiosity, but also an awareness that no matter how good I think I am, 
there's a whole lot more for me to do. And so that's back to the innovative. As the world is accelerating, I need to continue to change. You know, you also refer to build a strong support system. And as I kind of looked at the notes there, I wasn't quite sure what what you wanted to emphasize there. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about building a strong support system. What are your thoughts, as as you can share with myself and the Mm -hmm. listeners, what are your thoughts about building a strong support system? So this really ties both personal and, and the culture of the organization. So Gallup talks about having a best friend at work. And I use another framework uh, from a Harvard researcher uh, that looks at organizational vibrancy. And it really is, it quantifies what does best friend at work mean? Because I don't talk about hobbies. Um, I, I want to know that when something comes up, if I'm doing something that puts me at risk, my colleagues will tell me, help me course correct. If, I've, if I'm working on something new and I know I'm, it, it's a little um, tentative, right? I'm not sure it's going to work. I'm doing an experiment. I need colleagues I can trust who will say this is working, this isn't working. They give me honest feedback. They, I can show up and be who I am, genuine, and I trust them. So, so this is, if I were to walk out of a restroom, there's, I actually have a story of walking around Lowe's with my dress tucked in my undergarments after using the restroom. Um, Let, let's talk about that story. <laughs> That's always... You know uh, what? I, <laughs> nobody said anything until I was in the parking lot loading my car. There may have been some tweets. There may have been, like, ladies of Walmart pictures. That, you know, it's in one I, of their ads, I think. Oh, yeah, what not to do. <laughs> Don't shop here. Uh, and it was in a, I was wearing a business suit that day, so this was really a bad look. Um, do I have colleagues who, if I am doing literally or metaphorically the, you know, s- skirt tucked in my undergarments, will they tell me, or will they make they can they'll probably still make fun of me, but will they do what's in my best interest and the best interest of the organization so that we all succeed, rather than saying you know what this is an awfully competitive place and. You look bad, it makes me look good, man. I'm going to push you under the bus and back it up over you. Well, you know, speaking of a support system, I wanted to tell you, you have a a piece of spinach in your teeth. Mm, Thank you. uh, (laughs) Since I didn't eat spinach today, I'm (laughs) off the hook. Um, As a leader, is it okay to show your emotions? I think you have to, but not overshow. Again, I... We talk about authenticity, and I, I am a big fan of it, but not. I also manage it. So if I'm having a bad time, you know, again, I uh, well, so we put my mom in assisted living a couple years ago. There was no way to hide the challenge to me personally for going through that. And people who know me and see me showing up discombobulated, they're going to pick up on that, and they want to know we're safe, I'm okay, because they care about me. So I think as we create work environments that are supportive and caring, folks want to know what's going on. But I also didn't need to tell everyone every detail about what was going on. So you're able to manage that, and that sounds like a, a good uh, piece of advice. Uh, you know, again, I, I like the topic uh, of the resilient leader. That says a lot of things to a mm-hmm. lot of different people in a lot of different ways. I want to go back and kind of recap, you know, four of the kind of key things that that you're sharing with us. One is, you know, certainly take care of your physical well-being, manage your thinking, develop emotional intelligence and a sense of purpose, and build a strong support system. Is there a favorite one in there? Is there one that's maybe the foundation that, Hmm. that we should study or I should study? You know, any of them missing means I'm not resilient. The one I often focus on is the managing your thinking. Because I can't always manage what's going on around me with sleep and, and, and that. I do the best I can, but sometimes it's not very good. I can always manage my thinking. That's what's going on inside me. And, and I would add to that then the emotional intelligence, because I think they're uh, interconnected. Just being aware of what's going on. How am I feeling? Often my body will tell me if I pay attention. But I could be, again, I pay attention to my body like I pay attention to my emotions. So I don't even know something hurts 
until I get home from work and I realize that I'm, you know, kind of looking like the hunchback um, from stress. So that paying attention to the physical symptoms often gives us insight into the more complex inner symptoms. How often or how many times a year do you speak on leadership to various groups and companies? Any any idea? You're all over the place. <laughs> well, so I do a radio show, so I am talking about leadership at least weekly, and then I speak at conferences, and that's probably monthly or quarterly. And are there any specific uh, industries that that you work in or specialize in, or is it all over, all over the board? You know, it tends to be all over the board. I work with hospitals and physicians. I work with manufacturing. I work with a lot of technology firms. The people who I work best with are the ones who recognize that their industries are changing and, in some cases, changing dramatically, and they want to get ahead of that change. You know, our production team keeps handing us questions, <laughs> and I can't read their writing, so, you know, you're not getting this question from the audience that they're out there, hey, ask her this, ask her this, that's how, that might have been a call-in, I don't know, maybe somebody was calling in. <laughs> so as we, uh, as we wind up the, uh, the podcast here, can you give us two, maybe three tips to be a better leader? A resilient leader, hmm. and we've we've talked about many, but some of your favorites. I think we've hit on these. So, being self-aware. First, I think managing the idea that being the hardest worker and the most exhausted wins me no points. It leaves me less productive and less resilient, and so I have to make a countercultural shift in many cases. As leaders, I, as a leader, I need to be personally resilient because that uh, enables me to, to meet the, my obligations as a leader. And yet many of us as leaders put ourselves last. And consequently, this is back to the, the mask. If I put myself last, I am not going to do the self-care required to be present and effective. And then third, we need to create cultures in our organizations that promote this not just for the leader, but for everyone in the organization. Perfect. Our guest today has been Maureen Metcalf, and I encourage our listeners to look her up, look at the uh, website, call Ray. I think you'll be uh, uh, very impressed with what Maureen can bring to your organization. So why don't we put a link to the free resilience assessment on your website so people can reach out to you as well as to me? Consider it done. Thank you. How about that? Good idea. That's positive thinking. <laughs> or you can cut that out. Yeah, that's negative thinking. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us on Unsuitable today, Maureen. Great, uh, great presentation. We're really gl glad to have so many great guests join us on Unsuitable, and we hope you are enjoying what you're hearing as well. As we begin a new year of programming for a podcast, we want to remind you that you are always happy to take listener suggestions and feedback. Give us your opinion. Send them to podcast at Ray CPA, and we'll do our best to provide you with even more valuable content in the year ahead. If you're new to Unsuitable on Ray Radio, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, or you can watch the magic unfold on our YouTube channel. And while you're there, like us, rate us, or leave a comment. We always love to hear from our listeners. Until next time, I'm Dave Kane, encouraging you to loosen up your tie and think outside the box. So much